today we're doing something a little different. I'm going to do a little explainer about how to get your bandsaw to cut straight and why it'll cut straight. Using as a demonstration machine, Forest Manufacturing Model 204P bandsaw, 20 inch diameter wheels, pneumatic blade tensioning. This is a high speed machine. I should explain this video relates to high speed bandsaws. Um, how do we explain that? A low speed machine, in contrast, is usually used to cut metal. The blade speeds are in the range of 100 to 300 uh, feet per minute for the blade. They typically run coolant and they either run flat wheels or wheel or wheels that have a rear flange. Uh, generally do not have a rubber tire. High speed machines, in contrast, such as forest builds, are used to cut insulation, plastics, foam, some woods, and lots of other odd things. If you'd like to see, take a look at some of our old test cut videos. So this machine, Model 204, 20 inch wheels, like all high speed machines, the wheels have a rubber tire. In our construction, the rubber is vulcanized on to the aluminum casting. It's not just what I call a rubber band stretched around and glued on. It's actually vulcanized on there. It's a thick layer. That wheel has a crown to it, the way a bicycle tire has a crown. That crown is the key to having your machine run well, whether it's got a rubber band or vulcanized tires or what have you. The, the physics on this make my head hurt. I went through it once and I had a headache for two days, but the secret is the blade likes to climb to the top of the crown. Um, if, the, if the wheel does not have a nice rounded crown, say it's an old wheel been worn flat across the top, then the blade kind of doesn't know where to go. It'll wander around. Um, that leads to crooked cuts. When people call me and they ask, why is my machine cutting crooked? Why can I not get a quality cut? One of the first questions I asked, after of course making sure it's the right blade for the application, I'll ask, what condition is your machine in? Are the wheels in good shape with a nice crown, a nice peak rubber to the peak of the rubber? Are the wheels aligned properly? Um, because that is what causes the, uh, the blade to stay on the wheels. A lot of times people obsess about blade guides. Blade guides are kind of a secondary measure or a fallback or a safety. The blade guides are not the primary reason the blade tracks straight. On this machine, we've taken out the blade guides. Right here, right here, no blade guides. This machine, earlier we had a roller style blade guide, we've taken them off. The blade still stays on the wheel. So the blade guides, I'm good taping, sorry. So we can run this thing without any blade guys at all. Now, what I'm about to do here, I'm gonna violate a lot of safety rules. Don't do this at home. Um, the blade guides are an important backup measure. They do provide an element of safety. If you push your machine too hard, the machine's not in perfect condition, they will help make a straight cut, but they're not the primary reason you get a straight cut. That's what I wanna illustrate today. So I'll button the machine up. crazy enough to uh, run this bandsaw with the blade guides off, but I will not run it with the wheel cabinets open. So this machine, vertical blade of course, traveling table. Um, as a safety feature, we love this because you put the workpiece on the table, then you put, roll the table with your hands. Your hands don't have to be anywhere near the blade to make the cut, important safety measure. Machine also has our laser guideline light. You can see this on my hand, or maybe on my jacket, but where the light shines is where the blade's gonna cut. Great for lining up your workpiece, also useful as a safety measure. If you see the red line on your hand, move your hand. So I'm gonna set up now, kind of a rip cut. Do one backing piece. 
piece. So I'm going to shave off something like a uh, quarter of an inch material here. I don't have this precisely set up. I just want to illustrate the principle. The material here is a uh, urethane tooling board, about 24 pounds per cubic foot density, um, equivalent to a hard soft wood or a soft hard wood. It's something in the middle range there. Cuts fairly nicely. Um, the blade, one inch wide by 035 thick, three tooth per inch, running at about 3,000 feet per minute. Again, that's what we call a high speed saw. Even though I do not have an upper blade guide in position, I am going to lower this. We call this the guide post. In addition to supporting the upper guide, it also is a safety measure of protecting the, the operator from coming in oxygen contact with the blade. So I minimize the exposed length of blade. If I was running blade guides, I'd also be minimizing the free span between the blade guides. Here it's just safety measure. Though. Just because if something happens, I don't want the blade leaping out at me. So I'll set up and run a cut here. about six eight inches of material cut through at a pretty decent pace no blade guides at all so if your machine is not cutting straight you're getting a bad result once you verify you're using the correct blade for the application check the condition of your of your uh, machine make sure your wheels have a good crown on them. The rubber is in good, good condition. It's not flat. It's not rutted. It's not chewed up. It needs to be a nice, smooth crown with a nice, even, round top to it. Check that the blade is tracking correctly. It should be roughly in the center of the wheel. Your uh, machine manual will have instructions for working on the tracking. If the wheels are in good shape, if the alignment is good, you're using the right, um, using the right blade, then the blade guides are a secondary issue. When we're cutting really big, hard, heavy stuff, we're really pushing hard, then the blades come into alignment, but really only the back guide. But you can cut with a well set up bandsaw with no guides at all.